Hey guys, Fist of Fury here. I don't want to take this too long because it's going to be a long review as it is. But obviously, I'm very late doing this video. And I don't think I'm going to be able to do any more of the War K unless you guys want to see more. But this is a late video. I'm sorry I took so long. Obviously, I had things to do. I had life to take care of. Didn't really have much time to do it. So, sorry. But I will try to make it up for the next one that's come out. But... Honestly, I hope you guys enjoy it, and maybe, hopefully, I'll review the next tank for the War K thing, but, alright, I just wanted to say that real quick. Here's the Leon Russ. So, the Liam Rust. Oh god. Okay, audience. I've been postponing this tank for a while. From the Nemesis video from the Orc tank, I'm finally reviewing this tank. And, my god, there's a lot to talk about here. Lots and lots to talk about. I mean, where do I begin with this? Also with us today is Ranger, because I don't know much about the War K universe, so... But this is an actual tank. Well, let's talk about no. Let's talk about that real quick, the audience. Well, before we get into the armament review and stuff. So, Leon Russ. So this is apparently an actual tank, but Ranger said there's something wrong with it. Like that's not correct. You want to explain to the audience that? First of all, let's go to the armaments real quick, and sorry about my controller, it's a little bit, one of the buttons broken with my sheer anger of some tanks I have to review this week, it's like, <laughs> but anyway, so, as you can see on the blueprint, I'm not going to go into detail, the front of armor is freaking broken, I mean, we're talking about 250 millimeters of angled 10 degree armaments, so that's going to block a AP. If your tank only shoots AP and APCR, you're gonna have a hard time pinning this unless it's over 300 and freaking five. 
because it's that type of armaments that are broken. Even the most flattest part of the tank, as you can see right here, the most flattest part of the tank is 300 millimeters. That's nuts. And most tier 10s can probably pin that if you have heat and stuff like that, but APCR tanks, like mediums and stuff, yeah, you're not gonna pin this friendly easily. But however, it does have one weakness, and it's one of the hardest spots to pen. And it is that frontal machine gun. Now, don't get me wrong. Yep. The, the tiny part is also correct, but like most people say, we'll shoot it right through the first machine gun. Well, here's the problem that I have a lot of people have a problem with, unless you have an extremely high penning gun and that's looking at you on 90 degrees right at your face. It's got spatial armaments inside it. So not only do you have the outside turret, but you also have the inside part of freaking almost 175 millimeters. That's ludicrous. That's why I did, or, did, or told you what I said. That first part is 230 backed by another 175, so that's 395 millimeters of pen that you'd have to have to punch straight through that thing. Yeah, and it's freaking or, nuts. on the flip side, the front plate is 250, then you have to go through the side of that turret box with another 30. Yep, and what he's talking so about, you the still little... need almost 300 pen to go through either spot. Plus yep. angles. Now, the thing he's talking about, the weak spot only on the tank that could probably work, is that little tiny, little, little, bitty, itty, bitty, 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 little commander hatch on top of it. Which, if you're sniping at this thing far away, forget it. You're not going to hit that. There is not many guns that can hit that target. That is ludicrously hard. There is no way in God's green earth that anyone can pen that type of thing. So, you're probably asking yourself, okay, what are the other things to worry about this? Well, angling it is a problem. Because the problem with this tank, I've known heavily with this tank playing this armament, as you can see... The tank's treads are welded into the tank, like the outskirt side of the tank. Most tanks that you see when you shoot tracks has a 50-50 chance of absorbing the shell through the tracks. That's what you want it to do because you don't want a full-fledged pen. Leon Rust doesn't have that ability. If you angle it by 20 degrees to an enemy, he can shoot your tracks like I'm showing you right now, if he angles like this, you can pen through that spot. Which is a huge problem because this tank is literally screaming 1v1 only. If there's people flanking you, like if you're going to see in these clips right here, Yeah, you're going to die a lot. So, the problem is with this tank is, literally, it's not bad 1v1, but if you're about to fight someone, just try your best not to angle too much. If you have to angle to pretend uh, HE shell that hits you, angle only 5 degrees. And that's usually good block with me, like Yag Panzer, like if I'm showing right now on the camera how much you should angle like this. The um, on the tracks confuses me. Yeah, I know. It's a no. multi-layer one. If you look through the armor, like, viewer, go look at 50. Hang on. It's behind the tracks, on the opposite side. Yeah. So it essentially implies that it's not actually connected. But at the same time, it obviously is. Yep, because it's another because part there's that's a on... massive gap in there. Yep. You so that 100 millimeters that's on the outside of the track. Yep. Which is weird because every time I see people shoot it and pen it, I don't take damage, which is weird. And then you've got the weird at the 175 marker, the weird like I don't even know what the hell you want to call those the shapes that are running along the lower sides of the tracks but they're underneath yeah. more armor yep that's why <laughs> confuses me that it they're connected to the tank but they don't act like they're actually connected to the tank yep and Not through the that, armor value and that's one of the problems when i said ap and apcr is going to have a hard time penning it unless it's like completely broadside 
Now you're probably asking yourself, is there another weakness to the front of the tank? Yeah, kind of, but it is still a ludicrous. <laughs> yes, there is the commander's hatch, but audience, look at how thin that is. If it's looking at you at a flat surface, you might as well not be able to pen that. It is welded in. It's like on the tank, but there's nothing sticking upwards to pen the upper part. No, I, I was about to. Spots. Yeah, I know there's right. weak spots, but it's like, but it's blocked by a viewport. <laughs> That's not even part no, of the no, tank. Not that. <laughs> I see more of its weak spots, but go ahead. Fair enough. But the thing I was saying is the turret itself. If you have the tank look away from the turret, you could pen it through the turret. And yes, it has spatial armaments. It's got like purple, green, and yellow. But unfortunately, though, it only blocks tier 8 guns. I've seen 9s pen that head turret. I've seen 10s pen head easily to those head turrets. So, that's why I say it's a 1v1 tank, because of that reason. So, yeah. But anyway, you want to continue what you see? Maybe it's something Those I don't know. Those fucking spots right above uh, the actual hole itself, where you have the turret mount. See that spots where it shows 150? Hang on, let me go over real quick to see what you're talking about. Right 100. below the turret. Oh yeah, the little side cheeks. Those but that's like it. Potent weak spots only being 150 millimeters of armor. True, but if it looks right at you, it's a very hard angle to pen that. Yeah, but the moment that they try to angle in any way, shape, and form, it becomes an instant pen. And again, that's why I'm saying, audience, you do not so you want to angle to this go fucking thing. of the tracks or anything. I mean, for those little spots right there. That is true. And like I said, but the problem is what I tell anyone who has it, just don't angle. <laughs> like, only angle a little bit, but don't angle a lot. Like, then, five degrees. As of obvious, like, most tanks that have turrets lifted off from their holes and are actually, like, slammed down up against the hole, the turret ring. Yep, the turret ring. But that's like a good street shot right there, too, since it's close to the tank itself. But yeah, that is a weak spot, too. But, the same anyway... Most tanks that don't have the turret slammed down directly onto the hull, and you can see the turret rank. It's a very potent weak spot. So, in conclusion, I don't want to make this too long because we got a lot more to do. In conclusion, don't angle yourself. Do not shoot the main front machine gun unless you have a ridiculous amount of pen. And that's just basically it. If you have to fight, make sure you only angle it five degrees and also keep the enemy in front of you. Do not get flanked. This is not a tank that's worth getting flanked over. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on because that is a lot we just talked about here, but it is one of the major problems that I have to look over and explain to you audience. Now let's talk about the controversy I have with a tank. It's main cannon. Oh, I mean, where do I begin with this? Well, let's first talk about its stats. Fire rate is 6.5, accuracy at 100 meters, 0 0.29. This thing has a horrible aim time sometimes. It is not fast, it is not slow, but it just feels sluggish. And I get it, it's meant to be a hold down, keep the enemy in front of you, stationary tank, so as long as you keep the enemy not destroying you and you've got a good position, aim time wouldn't be a problem for these types of tanks. But we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> um, but damage is only 500. I've done mostly 450. That is the average roll I've done with this tank, 430. But again, not bad. This is the part where I get a problem with. Pen on 100 meters is 232. Now, before anyone in the War K universe bitches me out on this, hear me out. I don't like that pen. I mean, that is an awful pen for the tank. For To give you an example how bad that pen is, the E100 Nemesis can... Oh my god, I got an update. And now it's just 310 pen. It used to be 280 when I reviewed that. What the fuck? Um, let's give it a different example because that's... Wow, okay. Um, here we go. Let me give you this example since I didn't know the Nemesis got an update. I guess people were complaining about its pen. Um, let's look at the Brick, which is another wonderful, interesting tank, and I'm being sarcastic about it. 
but let's just talk about its pen. The tier 8 pen on that, which can't fight tens, is 225. This is 232. Nearly almost 10 millimeters more, and it still has a problem. Now, for those who are going to say, and I know Ranger's itching to say something. Sorry, I just want to get this out. So, yeah, you can see right now, the gun is not bad. That's the thing. It's not bad at all. But the problem I have with it is, you see the problem? It's close to tier 8 pen. And that's a big problem when you're facing 10s. unrealistic amount of tanks that can surpass that that aren't even tier 10 yeah i mean <laughs> almost all of my tier 10s have more pen than this thing it's only yeah, got 232 uh, here let me basically throw a dart at the board and see if i've got more pen than it yeah like the sad part is i almost went to an eight mind yeah. you an eight and it like gets close to that pen yeah, and Type 4, it's like, isn't it, like, right to it? Oh, well, the Type 4 has 249 millimeters of pen on its AP. Yeah, and that's that like is... 140. Yeah, and this is at 100 meters, audience. Mind you, mind you, 100 meters, which is, like, one grid over. We're face-to-face -face combat. 500 meters is 229, which most of the time you're fucking fighting in the back. Do you see the problem? Here's the concept 1B. Fucking yeah. thing's a tier 9 and has 258 millimeters up on a 115. No. Now they don't put the actual caliber of that thing up anymore, but it's still a 115 and has more pen than what I'm guessing is a 150. Yeah, and to be fair, audience, I know what you're all going to say, Fury, but still, it's a small caliber gun. Okay, we can no, argue that... Well... Let's just say it is, because it's obviously acts like a small penning gun or a howitzer with a small pen. We could just argue that assumption. Okay, we could say that all we want, but the end of the day is we're talking about a tank that you pay for a tank that barely can't even fight heavy tanks. Like, certain weak spots on heavy tanks in tier 10s don't have enough pen to do that, unless they're complete idiots broadsiding. That's the problem with that pen. And it's, uh, and you will see Let's why. Let's be a little bit more honest when you say it's a small gun. The Austro Militarium, being the main core infantry across the entire Imperium, not right. the Adeptus Astartes vehicles. If they ever did put a cannon on one of them, which not something that hasn't ever been done. There are a few versions of the Austro Militarium that actually use cannons on top of them and the only things they'll either put up on top of them if they're using a gun with a turret is a massive minigun that fires at minimum like a 30 millimeter round out of it you have a rail gun or you have two different versions of cannons where one is like a fucking 180 millimeter mortar and the other one's a freaking 150 True. So no matter what gun you put on that thing, it's got a very large cannon. It shouldn't be hitting for that hard. To be honest, it should be hitting for the same damage as an E100. And it honestly, technically has the same caliber as an E100, but hits for well more than 200 damage less. They probably were thinking that, but at the same time they were thinking, oh god, we made the armaments very hard for AP and APCR. What should we do? Let's just make the pen so weak on this tank so it balances out the amount of armaments it has in the front of the tank. Yeah, That's my only you're assumption. Nuke the damage as well. You're gonna yeah, I know. A shitty pen, give it a fucking damage roll that can at least compensate for the fact that it's got something like a 150. Because the battle sure. cannon, being the standard freaking cannon put on anything, and all of freaking, not just the Astra Militarium, also going into the Adeptus Astartes, is usually a 150. It sure. is their most casual freaking caliber they use. Go big yeah. or go home with them. That's essentially how they roll. So when, when they said they were releasing something for Ultramarines, the fact that they brought an Asta Militarium vehicle in is very disappointing. 
Because that's standardized infantry. That's oh, the not one. the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marines, the ones in big suits of power armor, the chapters. That That is not their vehicle right there. This that is belongs true. not to them. It belongs to the people that don't even know that the Gene Stealers or Xenomorphs exist. They have no idea. The oh, only God. thing they know that exists are the Chaos and the Orcs. So, I'm not trying to give you guys a history lesson. You're here for the tank review. Sorry about that. Sorry, so, a little bit in too deep depth. It's just, it annoys me that they brought in this, which is supposed to be for, you know, the Ultramarines or the Battle Sisters, which are chapters, and they brought in Asta Militarium vehicle. I know. I, well, and it's just wrong in so many ways. That is true. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So, yeah, the first pen is bad, but we're not done yet how much, you know, hard this thing is. Because it does get a FU moment when we talk about its ammunition. So, obviously, you can see right there, ammunition, AP, APCR, and heat. Okay, standard rounds, and you carry 40 rounds. Okay, that's not bad. Now, turret rotation, I'm going to just save you the trouble since we went on a little bit longer. Is average, it turns really good. Like I said, aim time, a little bit crap, so you need to fix that. But it's also its viewing range sucks, because without having the combat rigs, ventilations of, and also binoculars, this tank has a horrible time. Now I get it, the people are going to say- 400 with a spouting of 436. Now, most people are going to say, well, Fury, why don't you just replace the gun lane drive you see on here with ventilations? The aim time is that horrible to me. I have to have aim drive with it. I can't put ventilations. Otherwise, it would be up to 500 easily. I get it. But at the same time, it just baffles me how... Now, I get it. It's a Mark One tank, so it's obviously going to be like hard to see if they're going by historical events in the 4k universe and i don't want to get no offense ranger i know you're going to correct me on that but uh, (laughs) yeah oh no (laughs) these things are extremely unadvanced they are probably about as advanced as a freaking mark one so don't worry about that okay fair enough so we'll just compare it to the mark one and i get it it's hard to see out of a tank as back in the first ever tanks back in the day but this is where all the tanks we're talking about here, and they added a fucking turret, so why the fuck does this thing have no viewing range? Like, you have a turret, like, you could see in 360 direction compared to, like, being stuck inside a tank. But, getting a little ahead of myself, but engine-wise, speed is like a par to a mouse, which, uh, if anyone don't mind going the same speed as a mouse, that's going to be a little bit of a turn down since the Mark One does go a little bit faster than the fucking mouse in real life. But whatever, we'll just say what it is. It is. Um, tracks obviously. Full rotation speed though. Yes, the whole like rotation. Six degrees per second. That's horrible. Exactly. And, and its soft it. terrain resistance is absolutely trash. At yeah. two point ten, that thing cannot drive off road for dick. Yeah, so you can basically tell this is a tank that heavily stays in one position, and then the thing you can't mm-hmm. easily retreat in this tank. There's no way you're getting out of there that fast. And even if you did, you have to use buildings and stuff to cover your escape, but. At the end of the day, this thing cannot outrun anything. So if you fuck up, you fucked you know, up. <laughs> I'm not saying that this is like anything truly redeeming about all of its bad qualities. But at least the fucking radio has 720 meters worth of signal range, so it goes over seven grid squares. And I hope it has single range. Jesus. Oh, it's like it amplifies the German and Soviet combined tank, and they took the worst aspects of it. Uh, so now let's talk about the ammunition cost. Well, obviously, it has up to 830 speed, which is below average, but average enough. It's not too bad, but it's 1,025 per shell. And this is the problem I have with the tank, and I'll go more into the personal opinion is this shell it's fucking apcr or apds which is apcr well the f- reducing, discarding sabot but yeah close enough you're close enough true they but it fixed 
but it fixes the problem heavily, audience. At 100 millimeters, which is like right in front of their face, is 304 millimeters. That fixes a lot of problems. But again, I want to save my rant for the end thing, or let alone the personal thing. But for 500 meters, it's 294, which, again, not bad pen. I mean, that is right up there with destroyer pens. That's great. It's 4,800 a shell. Oh, God. I, I'm saving it. I'm saving it because I want to talk about that in the personal thing. Believe me. Uh, so, and the speed's 918, which is weird for me because APCR is supposed to go like 1,000. No, this one goes 100 less than a standard APCR, which is weird to me. So, yeah, I'm just saving it. I'm just saving it. And high explosive is 608 a shell, which the penetration is 85 to 85 for both range, which is a damage of 650. I went back none of these because what type of light tank or thing you're going to see besides a light tank that usually you don't fight usually 90% of the time or already if you get to it at the end. It, just don't pack it at all. Even if it is something like that, just don't pack it. But the splash radius is 2.56, which is odd. But whatever. But, you know, it is what it is. So, I know Ranger wants to say his thing, but I'm, I'm just going to get right to the battlefield and show you this game's personal thing. So, my personal opinion on the Leon Russ. This one's going to be tough because... There's a lot of people online that I've noticed will pretty much say that if I talk anything bad about this, you're considered a heretic. And I, I I don't know where that comes from. And I get it why people love this tank. I really do. The armaments is amazing against AP and APCR. It's fucking downright broken. Unless you're a fucking TD that has 306 pen. I get that. But however, we have to talk about the actual game and I'm not talking about just the tank itself because obviously the tank can be mediocrely work to your advantage but here's the problem I have with the tank the fact is because it's not the armaments I have a problem with because every tank has their strengths and weaknesses I like that but I like a tank that is balanced this tank is not balanced at all why well to be compared to what every YouTuber says about it, yeah, it's broken. But in my way of thinking, it's even worse than broken to me. It's downright a pay-to-win tank. Well, as you already tell, your standard rounds only pen certain medium tanks. And shooting at range, which I recommend sometimes because if you try to charge head first, you can easily get flanked. So this thing's not a in-your-face tank. It's more like mid-range fighting. It's going to have some problems. I mean, pending with that low pen, you might as well take a tier 8 that gives you money and try to shoot at long range, which is a really, really big problem. And the only way to compensate to fix that is to load premium. But do you see the problem I have with the tank audience right there? Like, do you see where I'm coming from? What is the point owning a tank if you're just going to be spamming prem? Like, really, what is the point? Because this is an expensive tier 10. Tier 10, mind you. And mind you, mind you, there is no money earning. Only 5% XP earning. Does that sound fun? Now, granted, yes, everybody in War K's universe is going to call me a heretic because I'm giving shit to this tank. But I'm being honest with you. E100 Nemesis is fun. It has a multiverse reloading system. And now apparently has a buff of 310 millimeters of pen. That is perfect for the tank it is especially when you're in e100 it just fixed it with whatever update just came out for it leon russ suffers heavily with this just the fact that you're going up against mind you tier 10 not an 8 you're going up against yag panzer e100 type 5 heavy mouse fucking anything with armor that's up to 250 you're going to be spamming prems and 90 percent of the heavy tanks even the soviet ones have more than up to 250 
Now, you're probably going to say, well, Fury, you could still use the normal rounds. Yeah, if they're dumb. Because, one, the only way you're going to easily pen a heavy tank is if it has barely any armor, like the Chinese, or you're going to pen broadside, which most of the times you do that is when they're not paying attention to you. This is a tank that you're going to be paying attention because, once again, you're a unique, unique tank that is going out to the front lines and everybody's going to be like, Ooh, Leon Russ, I'm going to shoot you because I heard you are a cancer. But yet this cancer has to be cancer to the player because you have to spend prem in order to pen that heavy tank. That is the major problem why I have so much frustration. And this video you're watching right now, this battle I'm showing you, takes, I, it took me 25 battles with Soldier. Which, thank you again, Soldier, for helping me out this day with the review. It's just so unbelievably hard to play this tank without dying. That's the thing I baffle my head around. This thing can block AP, APCR, but it can't block fucking heat. It can't block the yellow rounds that the Jagdpanzer shoots. You're fucked. Meaning that if you're in a stationary tank, you're trying to make a money tier 10. And you're like saying, okay, I can do it with APCR. But you're not going to survive against TDs, which is 90% of the time are in the game. You're not going to survive them. And you're too slow. Now, you're going to say, well, fear the E100's slow. Yeah, but now that that buff came in, it's now got 310 millimeters of pen. That balances out of how much um, suffering you have to do. <laughs> I do have one thing about that. The E100 itself has more pen than that. The E100 standard is 246, and it's APCR, sorry, my bad, heat, is 334 mil or millimeters of pen. So that thing can stare at a Leon Russ, doesn't matter where, and punch around straight through. True. And, like I said, it's just baffling to me how much this tank suffer so and this wargaming even announced this is like the poster child of the whole thing it's supposed to be the grand thing of everything the only tank that does not have a decrease in price i have so much problems with it and i and if you love it great i don't mind you loving a tank that's the whole point of the reviews but personally if i had to choose between the nemesis and the leon russ leon russ would be sitting in my garage collecting dust that's how much hurt this thing is Yes, it could block stuff. Yes, I could be a bully trying to make people spend pram at me. Yeah, it's a bully tank, whatever. But at the end of the day, I prefer pen over armor sometimes if I gotta fight tier 10s with it. 90% of the games are always frontline brawling, frontline this, tack them head on. Yeah, that it's not gonna work if you got a tank that can't barely pen a heavy tank that's charging at you. So you have to spend premium after premium. With its 303 standard pen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, the, just one more thing. The Russians 122 is at tier 10. With their standard 258 pen and 340 premium. Yeah. Continue. Thank you. But it's, yeah, but you got, he's right. I mean, this is why, and not to mention Arties are going to have a fun time targeting because you're slow. And get it, yes, E100 has the same problem, which is, I'm calling it the E100. I know it's the nemesis, but I'm just calling it that for mm -hmm. thing. But it's the same tank, just slightly different stats. And gun. But my point is, well, not gun, like 15 cent. That's why I just, just go, slightly go. different stats. Yeah, go just, watch just my review. Keep going. Don't worry about it. Yeah, audience, just watch my E100. I mean, Nemesis review. It's already on there, down in this thing, the description below. But my point is, the Leon Russ suffers heavily, and I would not be surprised if I don't see any more Leon Russ players. Besides the fact that they want to do contracts of blocking shells, I, I, I know I'm not at the gold part yet, but it's really thing. But you're probably saying, well, here is it that bad? No, I have fun with it. That's the the thing that hurts me the most i had fun with it i find it okay bullying medium heavy tanks some heavy tanks that are tier 10 but if you have to go up against a super heavy tank it's a problem and half the time i don't want to switch out my shell to ap to risk getting killed or something i always have to load prem to get that extra pen that i need to kill the son of a gun i know that's cheap but come on like i'm trying to snipe people i don't want to risk dying and 
even though this video you're watching is a bad example of how I loaded APCR to some light armored vehicles, but again, I just don't like that standard shell, and that's a huge problem for how much they're asking for the tank. It's just ludicrous. <sighs> so, yeah, I I know there's a lot of negativity, but there's some positive, and it's so, and I I'm sorry that it took this long to review this tank, but because of how many people love this tank and call people heresy and stuff. I think that's wrong, in my opinion. You have the right to complain about a tank if it's that bad. I mean, as much as you love the Emperor or whatever else thing, even though Ranger Quest specify it's not part of the Ultramarines or anything, even though there's an Ultramarine commander with this tank now that if I find what the fuck. <laughs> but my point is... But honestly, at the end of the day, I'm going to say this from the last part of the video, if you love a tank, love it. Don't let people discriminate you. Don't let me discriminate you. Just enjoy it. Now, I'll see you back at the garage. So, the final verdict for the Leon Ross. Now, I know Ranger is waiting to rant at this last part about the description of the size of the vehicle, which is very interesting to me because, again, I don't know War K. But, Ranger, I'm just going to tell you this right now because I don't know if you have it on paper. I'm just going to tell you right now. The lowest price to get this tank is 16,000 gold. And then and then the highest is 8,000 gold with me, 18,000 gold with a commander. So I'm just going to leave it to you to judging the fact of how much like that's viewed to your eyes. But go ahead. <laughs> if you were to take that 30% saving off, it'd be 22,857. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? And that's just the fucking tank in the garage slot, by the way. That yeah. does not include the commander. I know. That's that's fucking so yeah. I know. I think the E one hundred is more better at that. It's like it's saying, Oh, the E one hundred is like <laughs> Let me put something honestly out there. That like legitimately with if you were to take that thirty percent off and then get the commander along with it, that costs an abstractly amount more amount of money than what I paid for buying the VK seventy two point oh one out with free XP. Yeah. I didn't even spend a hundred dollars buying the VK seventy two. No, that thing you're gonna have to spend a hundred dollars to buy everything on that thing. Yep. Yeah. It's fucking stupid. It's so freaking ungodly expensive it doesn't even make sense. Now, yeah. here's what I truly wanted to complain about. Yep, go right ahead, because I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> everyone can see, since they decided to change up the garage back to how it originally was when we got put back in the garage, everyone sees the nice little Jeep over in the side of the garage, which is, you know, an average-sized Jeep. Yeah, and Adeptus Starte is about fucking 12 to 15 feet tall, and they come up to the freaking flamethrower little turret hubs on the side of it. Yeah, that Jeep comes up to those. So that's implying that that Jeep is over 15 feet tall. <laughs> or it's implying that they completely screwed the freaking model of this and made it uber tiny for un... I don't even know the reason. Because I've only seen one of these things and I was in my freaking 430U. I was about half the size of this thing. I should not come anywhere near the size of a Leomon Ross. I mean, I guess it makes sense, because if you think about it, imagine a mouse, I mean, a ratter size coming right to the battlefield. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be that big. The size of this thing, to be honest, should be more towards, like, to be honest, kind of like an E3. Like, you know, it's generally a big tank, but not uberly oversized. Fair. The best way of putting it, it's probably about the height of an E100, and about the width of an E100, just a little bit wider because of those big, fat turrets, or, or fucking tracks and turrets on the side of them. One of them yeah. is literally called Ultramarines, and it's an old 360 game. You you know, wait, you just see the... a Leymon Ross in the game and have to guide and support one on your way to your mission objective. Yeah. You come up I... to its flamethrower, and that's it. That thing is massive. Yeah, so... You know, an Adeptus Astarte here could reach up, grab a hold of the cannon barrel, and start using it for pull-ups. <laughs> I know. And to, to clarify this argument, audience, of how small this is, you're probably thinking, it's not that small, but look at this. I'm switching to the Nemesis, and the camera has to zoom back how massive it is. 
But when I go to lay on Russ, it zooms back in. Like. Here's a better way. <laughs> straight down from the back end of this thing at that T3485 sitting in the middle of a freaking hangar. That is true. It's almost the same freaking size as this thing. That is true. You <laughs> fired at that. six. Medium yeah. tank. As soon as you I fire. I stop complaining about how small this thing is. All right, but honestly, we got to keep going, so. I'm good with leaving it there. You're not going to give it a final verdict of numbers? Our final verdict, quite literally, is it's a passable tank, and there's nothing wrong with it so long as they'll fix the model. But right now, I have no choice to give this thing more than, like, a three or a four because they screwed the model so bad on this thing. Fair enough, since you don't have the tank ready off a model. That's fine. But for me... Ooh, my turn. All right, audience. So, despite all that, and the problem I have is it's just... Okay. A lot of people are going to just call me, and this is going to separate the community heavily in my YouTube channel. It does does its job of harassing tanks at hold down positions. It does its job blocking shells. It does its job also at freaking getting rid of medium tanks pretty well. However, the edge sword is like it just can't pen super heavy tanks. Which again, again, I'm just gonna point this out again. I don't want a tank that's too broken. I want a tank that's balanced. And the problem with that pending gun, it is below average of a standard heavy tank in this game. Which is ridiculously stupid, especially when Ranger compared the size of the tank in real life. Even though the turret doesn't exist, it should have the same pen as anyone on it. Even if you have to give me a longer reload, fine, I will be happy. As long as you give me more pen and damage. That's fine. But, well... I just have one thing about the whole thing of not having a turret. That was before I f realized that this is an Ostra Militarium vehicle. With them so bringing in two chapters of Space Marines, I thought it was supposed to be a Space Marine vehicle. Yeah, especially when if you buy the especially Mega Bundle, the it has a... <laughs> person who's supposed to be in this vehicle is an Adeptus Astarte. Yep. Not the... the Ostra Militarium, <laughs> they do have this one. This particular... Lehman Russ is called the Vanquisher. There's another one called the Exterminator and the Eradicator. Yeah. So, any part of it. So, for how much they're asking, even just the tank itself is way too much. And then, mind you, again, audience, before I give a final verdict, this is a tank you can't reduce the price. Unlike the E1 Nemesis, which I didn't mention in my review on the Nemesis, you pick the Space Marines, you can get it down in low price. If you pick the sisters, you get the back chat low down in price. This one you cannot low down in price. This is literally 16,000 gold. Meanwhile, the Nemesis, I'm just going to compare the two really quick to show why I'm going to get this rating. The Nemesis goes down, and it has more pen, more better chance of penning a tank than the Nemesis does without loading premium. Like, if you load no premium, the Nemesis beats it by a fucking land mile with its pen. But. I get what to say. I have to give it a fucking 5 out of 10, people. That is fair. It does its job at some parts. It just can't deal with 10s. If this was a tier 9 and kept it as it is, oh fuck yeah, then this will be broken. Just nerf the premium pen, make it a tier 9, and there you go. Problem solved. Tank solved. But no. If no one wants to hear it, it should be an 8. <laughs> I I'm mean, that... its frontal armor is god, but its side armor is absolute shit. But that's an insult. You're putting them right down to the fucking hey, it's fucking the same chaos. As so I'm just saying, for the that's perfect for the review. Now, for the mega bundle, <laughs> the mega bundle. The only thing I like about it, it gives you the ultramarine, but you can get it cheaper by getting the ultramarine by itself by four thousand gold for fuck's sake. So, if you're going to buy the Mega Bundle, even with the 7 days of premium, I'm sorry, that's a 3 out of 10. It is garbage price of what they're asking for this. Yes, you get armor. Yes, you do that. But, God, no. No. That's not worth it. <sighs> it's just bull crap.
So holy, one hundred and five grand. Yeah, you just saw that. Yeah, no, I haven't been in the store since I ran. Yeah, sorry, he's been. I'm talking to the whole thing. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, that's, um, yeah. They're, they're my personal opinion is uh, please, please do not feed the stupidity. Please do not feed the <laughs> stupidity right here. And I know some I'm people a bought it. Warhammer fan. I've played almost every Warhammer game I've ever been able to get my hands on, and anything that has been added in on any game. Please, whatever you do, do not support this stupidity. Yep. Only if thing you I have to say. If you want the tank, go for the sixteen thousand at least, just the sixteen thousand. But it's just like, but at the end of the day, what's the point? Because I get it. There's going to be people arguing about it. I know there's going to be in the comment section of all this, but I'm just telling you right now, audience. For spending that much gold for a tank that mediocrely pens some tanks and has to load prem, no money earnings, it, it, it's a really big flop. The e, the Nemesis is getting more recommendation than the, net, the Leon Russ. And it's sad to say that about an actual War K tank in this game and Wargaming treat it like dog shit, in my opinion, with its pen. Armor, fine. It's okay. It's broken sometimes. But pen, they did it fucking dirty. And I, I'm i just going to stand by it. Five out of ten. So, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Ranger, being here. And next time, we're going to go to the dark side. We're going to chaos. Ah, that sounds fun.